Buonasera a tutti, spero che tutto vada benissimo per voi. Allora, oggi uh, vi parlo dei pronomi oggetto diretto. Hello everyone, I hope you're all well. My name is Charlotte Moore and this video is for predominantly for my Italian club members. That's Ciao Cepsto. Um, but also for anyone who's interested in learning Italian or indeed French or English, uh, which are the languages I teach. So in this video, we're going to be looking at um, Italian direct object pronouns. So, oh, sorry, always end up hitting my microphone. <laughs> um, so this is the, um, the, the phrase that you can look for if you want to do some further research or if you want to watch some other videos. Um, Italian direct object pronouns or direct object pronouns object pronouns, direct pronouns, pronomi diretti, pronomi oggetto diretto, there's a few different terms that we'll find them. So um, what are they? Well, um, so first of all it's worth you knowing what a pronoun is. A pronoun is something that replaces a noun or the name of a person. Basically um, it replaces a thing or a person. So um, qualcosa o qualcuno. And um, a direct object pronoun, well, an object, first of all, we need to know what an object is. So um, let's see, I've got a handout here, which I'll be sending to my uh, club members after I post this video. Um, so in uh, a sentence, let's take a sentence. So you may already know this, but um, generally in sentences or in a clause, um, you have the subject and then you have an object. So, uh, for example, in in this sentence, compro la casa. Compro la casa. I am buying or I buy the house. I'm buying the house. Compro la casa. <laughs> I'm buying the house. In this sentence, the subject is the person, is io, io compro. Io compro, I buy, compro. This verb is in the io form. So I am the subject of the sentence because I'm the person performing the action. The action or the verb is comprare, to buy. So in Italian, um, the subject and the verb can be identified in one word because the verb comprare is conjugated in accordance or in agreement with io. And this is the present tense. So the subject of this sentence here is I. Now the object is this. La casa. <clears throat> so it's the, the thing or the person in the sentence that the action or the verb is acting upon. So subject um, performs an action upon the object if you like. It's not always that simple or that obvious, but I think from the examples that I show you it'll become more obvious. So pronoun replaces an object, or it, pronoun replaces a, na a noun or a person, so a thing or a person. The object is the part of the sentence or the phrase which is having an action performed upon it, so the house is being bought and um, the direct bit. Now that's the main thing. So direct object. What's a direct object? And what's an indirect object? Well, I'll be doing a second video on indirect objects, indirect object pronouns. So a direct object, what makes an object direct is the verb that's used with it. So here we use the verb comprare, so to buy a house. I buy a house. I buy a car. I buy um, a telephone, I buy a watch, I buy some roses, I buy a baguette. Whatever you're buying, you're just buying it. There's no preposition between the verb to buy and the thing or the things that, it's, that are being bought. So for example, if you were to buy um, something for someone, then the verb comprare would be followed by per. Comprare per qualcuno. 
um, to buy roses for someone, for example. But here you're just buying something. You're not buying something for someone. <laughs> just hit the mic again. So when a verb is followed directly by its object, to buy a house, to eat the apple, to see the child, to hear the music, um, to take the coffee, for example. All of those verbs are followed directly by an object. So the object that follows the verb can be replaced by a direct object pronoun. For example, um, prendo il caffè, I take the coffee or I'll have a coffee, could also be said lo prendo, it I take, lo refers to il caffè. La prendo, la prendo, la refers to a, a feminine um, object, so it could be la pizza, la prendo, I'll take it, it is feminine. So remember that in Italian obviously um, there's masculine nouns and there's feminine nouns, whereas in English they don't have a gender, things are just things. We can refer to an object as it. In Italian, you refer to the object by either lo or la when it's a direct object. So let's get some examples here. Um, I should explain that using lo or la to refer, for example, to la casa or il caffè or il telefonino, il panino, or even lo can refer to a, a man's name, Stefano. Lo vedo. Ah, lo vedo lì. I can see him. Lo vedo. Ah, Maria. La vedo. I see her. La vedo. So, um, normally, or in general, you will use um, or hear these object pronouns, it, her, him, used in conversation to replace the full name. So, instead of um, like if you're having a conversation about a house oh I'm buying a house um, I'm gonna buy it next year it's a big house I like the house that kind of thing without having to say no in order to avoid saying the house the house the house the house you can just say it so it makes your conversation more fluid and um, uh, it's just like in English when we say it or her instead of um, oh, a little moth, instead of, um, you know, saying the full name. So let's get some examples here. Um, sorry, my office is, <laughs> it, there's loads of space, but over in this corner, everything's kind of compacted in to kind of fit in the screen. Um, okay, so here's an example. Compro la casa. I'm buying a house. La compro quest'anno. I'm buying it this year. La voglio comprare perché è molto grande. I'm buying a house, I'm buying it this year, and I want to buy it because it's very big. Okay? So, lo and la mean it or her or him, depending on what you're talking about. But um, let me show you the actual list of object pronouns. So, I'll zoom in here while I remember. Eccoli. Now that was a clever little thing I did there. So when you, if you were part of my club, you get this handout, it'll look something like this. I might add some images if I have time. Um, you'll see that at the bottom it gives you another, um, another example of when you'll use or see object pronouns. So if lo means it or him, and I say ecco lo, ecco lo, Ecco lo. Ecco, with an object pronoun attached, means, for example, ecco lo means here it is, as in something masculine singular. Ecco lo. Oh, dove il caffè? Ah, ecco lo. There it is, that actually is coffee. Ecco lo, here it is. Hmm. Ecco lo. Um, ecco mi, here I am, me. So, um, me is the first direct object pronoun. So um, here it is there. Eccolo lì. <laughs> L'oggetto diretto. 
there it is there I'll just zoom in one more time so um me let's think of an example with me I think I've got oh no here's one so at the beginning of my um Skype conversations my Skype lessons which they're all they're all done via Skype at the moment because we're in lockdown I tend to say mi vedi mi vedi so mi means me and vedi is the two form of the verb vedere which means to see so because I'm on informal terms with my established students when there's only one of them I'll address them in the two form so I'll use verbs in the two form mi vedi do you see me let me show you what that's written like mi vedi mi vedi so the pronoun comes before the verb so there's me which is the first pronoun it basically means me and it's got to be followed by a verb it doesn't have a preposition after it so um, vedere to see see me see doesn't have a preposition like to or at or for or with after it um, me vedi hence it's di it directly is followed by in English it's directly followed by the object do you see me <laughs> so here there is an alternative way of asking this in Italian so you can start off with the verb in the two form vedi me vedi me so me is the stressed form of the pronoun me do you see me <laughs> is it me you see <laughs> But you won't tend to hear that in Italian. You'll tend to have the object pronoun that replaces this, or is the alternative to this, and it will come before the verb. So, um, mi vedi? Do you see me? I might respond to that with, si, ti vedo. Yes, I see you. Ti vedo. Let me show you how that looks. Ti vedo. Ah, ti vedo. So that bit there means I see, and that bit there means you. So it's the two form. If I see all of you, all the people who are watching, like plural, of course I wouldn't use the singular two form. I would use the voi form, right? So if I wanted to say I see you, there's two ways I can say it. I can say vedo voi, vedo voi. Bit like in English, I see you, or you can use the voi form, the voi object pronoun, direct object pronoun, which comes in front of the verb vedo. So, vi vedo, vi vedo. Ah, I see you guys, vi vedo. So, mi vedete. Do you guys see me? Mi vedete? The verb vedere is a useful one to use um, because it's one that you'll actually use in Skype lessons or in videos. Um, mi vedete? It can take a bit of getting used to though because you might want to say the wrong pronoun and then the wrong verb because there's two things that change it's like and it's not like in English it can be easy to make mistakes with them you might say vi vedo when you mean mi vedete so you need to think about the verb in English the verb comes first I see I see and then the pronoun comes after I see you I see you um, but the whole point is we're Replacing the pronoun with, or replacing the noun, you, with the direct object pronoun. And in Italian, if you're doing that, the pronoun goes in front of the verb. So that brings me on to where you put um, object pronouns. So they go in front of a conjugated verb or a verb phrase. So let me give you some examples. Okay. Um, I'm going to give you like a, a longer form and then show you what it looks like in 
one of the, the pronouns used. So um, Luca. Actually, we've used. Um, oh yeah, we'll use compra. Compra. So Luca is buying, or Luca buys. What's he buying? He's buying il libro. He's buying the book. It could be a book. It could be a green book. It could be a big book. Like. The noun could have like a description after it, il libro rosso, il libro nuovo, um, il mio libro, it could be anything like that, but the, the main point is that it's il, it's masculine, and it's singular, libro, okay? Um, so that's going to affect, the gender and number is going to affect the pronoun that you use. Luca compra il libro, so that bit there is the object, this is the subject, and that's the action. We're going to say... He buys it. So il libro is replaced by the masculine singular lo, and we get rid of il libro because we're replacing it, and we place it in front of the verb. And by the time you're talking about him buying it, it's obvious that it's Luca buying it, so you don't need his name um, because the verb is already in the he form. And you've already established that what he's buying is il libro, okay? So in a sentence, when in textbooks, what you'll or on the internet when you find the description, you'll see that it says um, something along the lines of direct object pronouns answer the question what or who. <laughs> so when it says what, it means what in the sentence is being replaced. In this case, it's il libro. Okay, or it might be lamella, or it might be le donne. Okay, so um, let's have a look at another example. So in this example, you're going to see a direct object pronoun replacing a noun or a person in a sentence. So, um, okay, here's one. Um, vedo Sara ogni settimana. Vedo Sara ogni settimana. I see Sara or Sara. Ogni settimana, every week. I see Sara every week. So to make this, or to replace this uh, with an object pronoun, we have to find the object. So I'm the one seeing. So I'm the subject, the person doing the, the action. And the verb is followed by the object. Okay, so that's the verb in the sentence. There's the object. It's Sara. It's a girl. So we're replacing Sara with la right which is a feminine singular object pronoun so we get rid of the word, uh, the word sara and we where do we put it we put it before the verb so la vedo la vedo i see her la vedo ogni settimana i see her every week You've already mentioned Sara some point before, so we can just refer to her as la, okay? As long as the verb that follows is directly followed by the object, I see her, um, uh, or I take it, or I buy it, that kind of thing. Okay, so me replaces me, t replaces te, Lo replaces him, like Stefano, Marco, or it could replace a masculine noun. Il telefonino. Lo prendo con me. I take it with me. La replaces, for example, Sara, Maria, la ragazza. La penna, la pizza, la mangio. I eat it. Um, okay, what if you want to say us? You want to replace us. Okay, so let's use, um, let's imagine we're having like a, a Zoom conversation. Zoom seems to be like the application that people use at the moment during lockdown. It's become very popular. I haven't used it. In that sentence, it referred to the application Zoom. I haven't used it. To use it. So the verb utilizzare, um, non lo utilizzare. Non lo utilizzo, or non lo utilizzo. It, the app, is the direct object. So, 
non lo utilizzo l'applicazione in italian would be like a feminine noun that's an interesting point so um on this little kind of list here we've got niti lo and la and then we've got l apostrophe which might be a little bit blurry l apostrophe basically instead of writing something like lo i love it for example lo amo lo amo or la amo I love it. For example, um, something must be, uh, il vino. <laughs> Lo amo. Lo is it. Il vino. Or la amo. Hmm. La amo. La frutta. Si, la amo. Instead of writing lo and an amo with an o and an a, or an a and an a, you might, or you will see it, or you'll hear it, just l apostrophe. So you don't have two vowels there following each other. You'll see it with a little apostrophe, or you'll hear it with an apostrophe. Lamo. It, whatever it is that I've mentioned. Lamo. So, lo, la, and l apostrophe. L apostrophe could be either one of those. He, she, or it. Okay, um, so, uh, us. Right, yeah, that's where I was going. So imagine you're in a Zoom conversation and there's a couple of you, two or three of you, speaking to some other people. And you want to say, can you guys see us? Do you see us? Okay. Chi means us. And so that's the pronoun that replaces noi. And let's say we're talking to a bunch of people. We have to ask them, do you see in the plural? Chi vedete? Ci vedete? Do you guys see us? What if the answer is yes? Yes, we see you. We see you. Plural. Okay, so I'm going to put a little space here. This is the bit that means you, plural. So that'll be on this board, the, the pronoun that replaces you, plural. Voi. And this is the, um, is it to see or to hear? We'll just use to see. I can't remember. Ve diamo. We see. We see. You guys. V. So that's the voi form. So V means voi. Chi replaces noi. Lo and la and l apostrophe mean it or him, her. Remember in Italian they don't necessarily have one word for it. They have the word lo or la if it's a direct object. And lo will be from masculine words. It kind of like sounds like you're saying I see him. Even if what you're saying is il telefonino. La pena la vedo. It sounds like you're saying I see her. Even though it's just a pen, it's not a girl, but it's a feminine object, remember, okay? So, T um, replaces te, or you can think of it as tu. <laughs> tu and te. What's the difference? So, um, this is confusing. This isn't what this video is about, but it's worth just mentioning here. Um, and why is it me and not io? This is noi and this is voi. Li and le, we'll come on to that in a minute. Okay, so you remember I talked about the subject of a sentence? Okay, so like in English, let's think of English. You say, I want something. I am going somewhere. I have, I don't have, I am, I am not. I is different from um, me. I is the subject of the sentence. I am going somewhere. I am doing something. I plus a verb plus, say, an object. I am subject verb. I have subject verb. Let me show you what I mean. I or we have. We have. I is a subject, we is a subject. You wouldn't start a sentence in English with me, me have. 
unless you're just, you know, being a bit silly. We just know instinctively that me doesn't come before a verb in a sentence. It needs to be I. So if I ask the question who, um, who is there? You don't ask answer the question who is there with I. <laughs> if you're answering it in one in one word, you say me. You can say I am here, which is subject plus a verb. Or you can just answer it with one word, me, him, her. So him is different from he. You can't say him have. You would say he has, she has. So I, you, he, she, we, you and they. They're subjects. They go at the start of a sentence. They're followed by a verb. Whereas me, you, him, her, us, you and them, they are object, uh, the pronouns, and they, um, you can answer a question with them. Um, let's have a think. So, io is a subject of the verb in Italian. Me is like emphatic, it's telling you the answer to something. Who's, who's there? Like, who, who's, um, who do you see? Vedo te, I see you. Vedi me, you see me. So these are sort of like emphatic pronouns, if you like. However, noi and voi are the same um, as the uh, subjects of a verb. So the, the subjects of a sentence, you can start it off with noi and andiamo, or voi andate. Um, but you can also answer the question like who with these, noi, who's there, ah, noi, <laughs> who's with you, or who, who are they, voi, for example, who are they, voi, doesn't really work, um, who's there, you are there, voi, anyway, there's some confusion because noi and voi look, sim well, they look exactly the same um, as the subjects, um, but io, and me, two different things. So, me, t, mm, me and t really are the ones that are a bit confusing because you've got me, n, io, te, and tu. Don't worry too much about those, but there's different functions basically, and you'll get used to when you use them. Let's have a think. What else have I missed out here? So, um, okay, li and le. We need some examples of when you use them because. These can either be, uh, this can mean them, so loro, in English we would say them, and it can refer to people, like um, the girls, or the students, or the boys, or the men, or the women, or the kids, or the children, or it could refer to things like the shoes, le scarpe, le compro, I'm buying them, something feminine, le scarpe. It could refer to something masculine, plural. I libri. Li compro. I buy them. So with this in mind, now that I've rambled on a bit, let's look at some um, examples, which are actually on this sheet. Uh, let's see if I've got a spare page. We oui, was French, I meant. Si. Andiamo. Proviamo un esercizio. So, um, if I were to write down conosci Stefano do you know Stephen? do you know Stefano? it's in the two form conosci Stefano and you want to answer that question with yes I know him which is the pronoun that we need? the one that, um, that replaces him Lo. Lo conosco. Si, lo conosco. You put a si in there. Si. Lo conosco. Yes, I know him. What if we were asking, conosci uh, Chiara? Si, la 
on our score. I know her. Okay, um, what about... <laughs> okay, here's one. E... Hmm. Okay. I bambini amano me. The children, the kids, the little kids, they love me. It's me they love. Now I want to replace me with a direct object pronoun. How do I do it? So i bambini can stay in the same place. There's the verb they love. It goes after the pronoun, and the pronoun me replaces me, but it comes before the verb. I bambini mi amano. In fact, you could even take out the i and put mamano. Looks a bit strange, but that can work because it's an I followed by an A. Okay, what about, um, hmm, hmm, hmm. okay, this one's super easy. Uh, let's do it up here. Oh, okay. Manjo, what am I going to manjo? Manjo. Okay, may maybe it's not so easy. I'm going to make it more difficult. Okay, um, manjo. Gli spaghetti. Okay, what's so weird about this? First of all, gli spaghetti. So spaghetti in Italian is plural. It's masculine plural. It's not i spaghetti because they have a different article. Um, instead of saying i spaghetti, because it starts with an S plus a consonant, consonant and it's a masculine plural noun we have this word li li it's just like the normal masculine article e except it's pronounced slightly differently but it functions in the same way because this is a plural uh, masculine um, noun this is replaced by the masculine plural direct object pronoun li li mangio Li mangio. So, la mangio, li mangio, le mangio, lo mangio. <laughs> All mean I eat it or I eat them. You just have to know the gender and the number of the thing that you're talking about, whatever you've mentioned before or whatever someone else has mentioned before. Okay, um, let's see. Okay, there is one more thing. So, I mentioned echo. That little word here is something. Echo me, here I am. Echo vi. Here you are. Eccoci. Here we are. Eccolo. Here it is. That kind of thing. That's really useful. So you might see, instead of in front of the verb, you might see one of these direct object pronouns um, at the end of ecco. You might also see it. There's a few places you'll see it which aren't mentioned in this video, but the main ones are before a verb is conjugated, um, after ecco, and here's the last one at the end of an infinitive verb. So let me give you some examples. The infinitive verb normally looks like, for example, mangiare in the infinitive. Here it is, it means to eat. It hasn't been conjugated yet, so um, here's an example of an, uh, a conjugated verb. The conjugated verb in the uh, io form. Io mangio, mangio la mella. This is a conjugated f verb, that's the infinitive. So at the end of an infinitive form, so um, when might you see that? You'll see it in, for example, we used with the verb, following the verb, um, voglio. Voglio mangiare qualcosa. Voglio mangiare la mella. I've got apples on the brain because I've got a big bowl of them over there. If I wanted to, I could just put la mella, I could replace it with la, and I could put it on the end of this infinitive verb, like this. Voglio man jar la. I want to eat it. 
the apple that I've just spoken about. So you get rid of the last E, manjar, and then you add the um, the pronoun. Voglio mangiar lo, for example, il panino. Voglio, voglio mangiar li, gli spaghetti, etc. Okay, so you, you might see, or well, you probably will see or hear any of these direct object pronouns. Here they are. There's the plural ones. At the end of an infinitive verb. And infinitive verbs you often see after a conjugated modal verb, like voglio. Voglio comprarla. I want to buy it. Or devo um, comprarlo. I have to buy it. Um, so, I want to, I have to, or I must. What's the other one? Um, to have to, to want to. I can't remember the other one. How silly is that? Dovere. Let me just write down the modal verbs. Volere. Devo. Voglio. It's been a long day. Let me just see what the last one is. <clears throat> verbs Italian. What's the problem with leaving uh, recording until late in the day? Volere, dove? Ah, si, sì. idiot. Potere. Posso comprarla. Non posso comprarla. So you could use, for example, a negative negative uh, phrase followed by a modal verb a conjugated modal verb and then an infinitive and then at the end of the infinitive verb you could put um, one of those uh, direct object pronouns so let me think of another one ah here's one okay what does this mean non posso veder ti Non posso vederti. Maybe I should be doing this. Non posso vederti. I cannot see you. Uh, okay, okay. Um, here's another one. Devo mangiar lo. Devo mangiarlo. Ah, ma devo mangiarlo. Che cosa? Il cioccolato have to eat it, I must eat it. Okay? Devo mangiar lo. Hmm. Anyway, so there, there are some examples of how and when you use direct object pronouns. Let's just recap on what they are. So, to replace me or me in English, me in Italian, we use the direct object pronoun me. Put the English here. To replace the informal singular you and formal T. So he or she or it la and la he she or it. Remember sometimes it'll sound like an L apostrophe in front of a verb that starts with an uh, a vowel. That means he, she, it. If I want to replace noi or us, chi. That one's a bit strange because it doesn't start with an N, like noi. Um, it's also lots of other things. Chi can mean lots of other things, like ci vediamo, or um, well, we'll come on to that in a different lesson. Vi replaces voi, so you plural. And so these ones in the plural, lo becomes li, them as in i ragazzi or i libri, something masculine plural. La becomes le. Oh, sorry. So that means them. Okay. Right, well, thank you very much for that, and um, I'll follow up with an email and a copy of this.
and um, also I'll be posting a second video on indirect object pronouns which look extremely similar to these but the third person singular and plural are different so do watch that and let me know if you have any questions um, and uh, I hope to speak to you soon. Grazie mille. Ciao.